My guest tonight is the founder of one of the most influential websites on the Manosphere, Attorney Kings. He's written countless books like Bang, Day Bang, Pussy Paradise, and Freedom of Speech Isn't Free. His latest book entitled Lady is now available for sale, and today is the last day to get a discount. He's been on Dr. Oz. He's been banned from entire countries. He's even been detained by foreign authorities for having a black belt in women, I think, as he described it. I, of course, am talking about Roosh v. Roosh. Uh, thanks a million for making time for us tonight, man. We really appreciate it. Hello, Donovan. It's great to be here. I feel like I'm on with the old friend. <laughs> well, listen, um, speaking of old friend, I actually have written for you for quite some time. You actually started Return of Kings, I think, back in October of 2012. And I think my first article with you was in somewhere in the neighborhood of March of 14, somewhere like that. Yeah, um, it feels like such a long time ago when I started that website. Didn't expect it to gain as much traction as it did. I think it red pilled. I mean, I don't want to exaggerate, but hundreds of thousands of men. Uh, and, it, and it was when it was ongoing, when it was at its peak, and I would say its peak it, when it hit its stride yeah. it was around 2014 uh, when when you came on. It yeah. was such a pure thing. It was there was no other site like it. Um, and it was great to have men like you contribute their experiences and stories and knowledge. I mean, that site wouldn't have been what it was without men like you. Well, I appreciate you saying that. And you know, it's interesting. Those were like back in 2014, early 15. Those to me were the glory years, because if you can remember, I was I was the guy that essentially replaced Athlon McGinnis. Athlon was a fucking superstar. He was the man. He decided to, I guess, I guess he decided to sort of move away from Return of Kings for whatever reason. I'm sure you and him are still cool. But when it was me, you, Matt Forney, the rest of the guys, man, that, that really seemed that really seemed like the golden years for Attorney Kings. Yeah, and a lot of people wanted to give me credit for doing that, but really it was such an organic thing. Yeah. It's not like I was funded and spent millions of dollars on the on these articles like you see with the media was. It was such a, it was just men who wanted to share. You know, and I provided an outlet. I didn't um monitor them edit them i mean most of the articles you gave me i published it as is just for yep. a couple of grammar corrections so it was so for that brief moment of time you know it was just such a open thing but then th all good things come to yep. and and all, i think all those viral articles actually hurt us in the end it brought a weird element brought a lot of media uh, media attention and that 2016 meetup outrage in the yeah. beginning of the year that was the beginning of the end that's when the shutdown started happening yeah getting them by discuss and all that yeah. yeah so but when it was in its stride it was great a lot of men i mean so far rok has been closed for about six m months now and a lot of guys ask me when are you going to bring back i'm not it's not coming back it was it existed in a brief moment of time, but bringing it back down now is like beating a dead a dead uh, horse. It would have to be something different, something new. Uh, but that site existed, and I wanted it to go out on top a bit. It did. I did close it when it was starting to get on the down swing. But I am very happy with the articles that went up. I think it served its course, and uh, it's still online now, so men can still check out those articles sort of transition when people see that transition see uh, we told you that it was no, no 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 life is evolution you grow up you move on this is how life works when i was young and i started a game i didn't see it as work it's really actually if to go and pick up a girl get her into bed it's a series of steps it's a lot of steps oh, yeah uh but when you're starting it and you're really horny uh, you don't see it as steps going to the club with your friends with a bar or hitting on girls. That's fun. Yeah. That is a joy. Yeah. Even if you fail, you're like, bro, I just talked to that hottie and I almost got her number. It's, it's a joy. It's fun. That's how it's pure. So that, that kind of right attitude to the girl comes out. But then as you get old, as, as you do anything a lot, you start to see the steps involved. Yeah. Not only that, but you start to desensitize yourself to the reward. So yeah, your first couple of bangs, your first one night stand, your first club score, man, you, you, you were on cloud nine. Of course. It was amazing. But then now you're getting up there in the notch count. 
yeah, I kind of wish I slept well that night instead of brought this <laughs> go home. You know, why? I can't wait till she leaves. I'm, I feel hungover. Yeah. So what happens is the return on investment goes down. You see it as work. You lose that natural excitement towards it, which is a, which is attractive in itself sure. to women. And then that's when you know, hey, I had my fun. How do you deal with the, I guess, with the infamy? How do you deal with the constant doxing attempts of yourself and your family? Are there, and you don't have to give me anything proprietary, but no, how do you deal with that? Fine. I mean, what it is, is if, even though the address is technically out there, there needs to be a mob. If there's no mob, I mean, people are scared. People only yeah. when people want to hurt others, they they want to operate in the safety of the mob. They want to get that courage. Oh, everyone else is attacking him too. But now, let's say you're if you're if a lone operator puts your address out there, I wouldn't worry. And apparently, if you're on the right or doing uh, mass masculinity content, the odds of getting doxxed is very high. Yeah, of course, yes. Uh, so just if a lone idiot doxes you, that's not going to really hurt you. But if at the same time you get doxxed, there's this media outrage that is flooding you with emails and calls, that's when you have to take some kind of care, <laughs> you know? But right. other than that, yeah, you are out there. And uh, that was a lesson uh, talking about the, the fear. I haven't really talked about that. Yeah. Uh, that was such a lesson for me on what genuine fear feels like. Because people think they're in fear, but really they're in more of a general anxiety where they're like, oh, something could go wrong. I may lose my job or I lost my job. I could go broke. That's more of a generalized anxiety I've felt of a lot of people. But the fear, this acute fear, the, how it changes how your body, food tasted different. I couldn't taste my, yeah, it was something different. And, um, but I, I told myself, hey, Roosh, you're one of the few men who have kind of felt this, who've, who have gone through this. Right. Use it. Use it like you've used everything else. I mean, don't um get this mob back on your door try not to but <laughs> no. use it man this is a part of life you're you're going to get bruised you're going to fall down really just use it as much as you as 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 you can and i can say say this that kind of fear it told me what really is a threat and what is not so right. a lot of things people think are threats now i just laugh at it you know, because I went through that. And we live in a culture where people get outraged for the smallest thing. It's because they haven't experienced genuine threats. They haven't experienced genuine fear. Right. So they're going apeshit over things that really don't matter, that are not a threat. Good for people. And, and that's the way I like to connect with my audience. I talk more about my failures than my successes, just so that guys know and understand, hey, listen, I'm a real person. I'm not just some, I'm not some caricature. I'm the same. Now, me personally, I'm the same off the camera as I am on the camera. But the fact of the matter is, is that we still have feelings and emotions. We go through the same feelings and emotions as your average, I guess, quote unquote, everyday non YouTube content creators. And this is why I think there's a over compensation on the physical body, on yeah. the strength, because that's a little bit easy to do in the sense of you go to the gym, you follow the program, you eat this food and you get big. And on from the outside in, this guy is strong. This guy is big. He can fight. But let's be honest. You can be jacked, but have the mental strength of a, 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 young, a, a young boy. If you see me in person, I'm, I'm tall, but I'm not physically imposing. I don't look like I can crack your brain skull. But the mental strength that in the modern world, when you're not fighting with swords and shields, that counts for a lot. Because as you see... The mental world is going crazy. People are attacking. People are shutting people down. You need the mental strength first. I'll be honest. I, I've been going. I've been doing uh, gym stuff. I do a light calisthenics now. Sure. I never really had to use it in real life outside of a couple of shoving matches, a fight here or there. But I haven't had to use it. But the mental strength you use every day, yeah. every single day. So I'm not saying. And listen, now I know people are going to say. Roosh says don't go to the gym. No, I'm not saying that. But this overcompensation, over dependency on it, I think, listen, you can only, if you focus too much on the body, you get tired, then you can't focus on the mind. So there has to be some, some kind of balance. So when I see a guy that's really jacked, I think that's great. He put a lot of work into that. 
But who's the man inside that? After the muscle fiber, after you go through the layers of that, right. who's the man in, in, inside? And in this age, I think that's counting for a little bit more than only the physical strength. That makes sense. That makes sense. You're listening to the 413th edition of TSR Live with special guest Roosh V. You can follow him on Twitter at Roosh V, just like it's sound and spelled. And you can get his latest book, Lady, on RoosheV.com. It's almost like what happened with Return of Kings. I remember you specifically saying that, hey, it, like, you know, being on Return of Kings, you know, uh, you know, editing the material that used like that used to be fun. But now most of your time is taken, you know, editing all of the articles. And when something doesn't when something is not fun anymore, you just don't want to do it anymore. When it when it feels like a job, it's just like day game. When 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 you're going to the club with your buddies, you're, you know, hitting the Vegas strip to, you know, uh, hit on the, you know, hit on the plane full of hotties that just landed here from, you know, whatever country they're at. Yeah, it's all well and it's all well and good. But when it starts to become a job, that's when it becomes a grind, man. You certainly you certainly you certainly have to take that into uh, into account. And the one thing I've learned in life is that everything in the material world that we are a part of any pleasure, hobby, satisfactions from food, caffeine, alcohol, women, money, status, prestige, right. all these things, you get tired of it. Everything in life, in the material world, you're going to get bored of it. Right. And then one thing, I mean, what most people do, they got to increase the dose. Yes. Oh, uh, you know, that I need more girls, more money, more alcohol, more coffee, all this stuff. But you adapt to that. You know, humans, we adapt. There's nothing in the material world that can give you lasting satisfaction. Nothing. I have I can adapt to everything. I'm living in a shithole right now. It stinks. I'm only here for one month. It sucks. But I've adapted to it. I can adapt to anything. This is why we have to really be careful about what goals we set. You're setting a goal that you're going to get tired of. You're yeah. setting a goal that you're going to get bored of, that you're going to want to move on from. So now at least I'm, I do things with the understanding of this, right. that, that kind of helps, but you know, I hate to get soft on you guys, but the mm -hmm. only thing that really transcends the physical world, transcends the material world is love. Love for me is the closest we get to our spiritual core without being a Buddha and becoming enlightened. Right. Love is something that we're all capable of. And uh, I'm not saying go love the next girl, but we already have mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, even a dog. Sure. I think a love between a man and a dog actually means a lot more than banging hoes yeah. you know, than, or than going to the gym to puff your body up and looking in the mirror. You feel good for a moment, but it doesn't last.